Phuket Extra is brought to you by Coast Beach Club and Bistro at Centara Grand Beach Resort. Chill in the sun, sip under the stars. Sawadee Krap, and welcome to Phuket Extra, brought to you by Coast Beach Club and Bistro at Centara Grand Beach Resort Phuket. I'm JP Mastanza, and here's the news you need to know. Phuket police are still mulling over whether to charge the driver of a truck that ran over a pregnant British woman earlier this week, while messages of support and condolences pour from all over the world. Sophie Emma Rose Anderson was riding in the back of a motorbike driven by her long-term partner when they fell onto Tepkasatri Road. That's when the truck drove over the woman's body. After initially fleeing the scene, 30-year-old Natawut Kim Chue surrendered himself to police. Meanwhile, the woman's partner and the driver of the motorbike has since posted a video clarifying their motorbike crashed after a car in front of them suddenly stopped. In the video, he also thanked people for their support and called for continuing support in helping him come to terms with the loss. And the hunt is now on for the people behind Tuesday's bombings at a big C supercenter in Patani. And authorities think they've got something to go on after CCTV footage showed four people were involved. Yeah. Authorities are still in the process of identifying the four suspects, but they did say that they're most likely insurgents based in South Thailand and that there could be as many as 10 other people involved in the attacks. Tuesday's attacks saw one bomb go off inside the supermarket's food court at about 2 p.m. And as many shoppers and staff ran out in a panic, a second bomb hidden in a pickup truck exploded outside and 61 people, including children, were hurt in the blast, though no casualties have been reported yet. The attack is just the latest in the violence that has enraptured South Thailand for over a decade, many of which have centered around military bases hotels, and even hospitals, while this same Big C Supercenter was attacked twice in the past decade. This story is ongoing. And police have in custody a 25-year-old man on a rape charge after he was accused of the crime by a woman who survived a four-story fall from a building in Phuket town following the incident. The woman suffered head injuries after she plunged to the ground atop the roof of a four-story building. And while recovering at the hospital, she gained enough support to finally tell authorities the reason behind her suicide attempt. Though police were originally made aware of the rape claim, preliminary queries led the officers to dismiss it originally. But now police have in custody Narong Pinta, who allegedly committed the rape last week, though he denies the allegations. The woman remains under observation at Vashira Phuket Hospital, and now police are investigating. And sit right there, Phuket Extra will be right back after this. Run, paradise. Welcome back to Phuket Extra. After a seven year legal battle, two Phuket Sea Gypsies are accepting the Supreme Court order demolition of their tin homes on land in Rawai belonging to another family. The legal decision was made this past Monday, as the lawyer for defendants Arnan and Mahren Bangjak confirmed that the family has moved out of buildings following a lawsuit by brothers Suteb and Tawi Mukdi. A civil court order was made back in 2012 for the two families to move out of the homes, and just this past February, 50 officers arrived at the homes to enforce that order which prompted over 200 sea gypsies to mass in front of them to prevent the demolition of their homes. Monday's court hearing is just one of a litany of legal battles involving the sea gypsies in Rawai, some of whom are wrapped up in proceedings related to Baron World Trade, a company with ambitions to build a hotel on the land. And should people in office be banned from politics for life if they're found to be corrupt? That's what many were discussing yesterday during a seminar hosted by the Constitution Drafting Committee. The seminar was a way to gather opinions from people across the public and private sector, specifically dealing with what the Office of the Auditor General should be doing. For clarification, the OAG, the Office of the Auditor General, is the independent organization that, 
at any time can audit the budget of any state agency for discrepancies. That's according to CDC Chairman Michai Ruchupan, one of the men who helped write the country's new constitution in the past two years. While the role of the new OAG is still being debated, several still believe that the idea of banning corrupt politicals for a time from five years to life should be law, but we have to wait and see if it all comes to pass. And do you hate the lines at the immigration office as much as I do? Well, there's good news as the government is testing out a new app that could reduce your wait times. The app is being tested at the Wahen Immigration Office with foreigners downloading the service that allows them to know what queue numbers they were given, giving users a heads up on how long they would have to wait before processing or seeing an officer. The new app is part of the country's Thailand 4.0 scheme, which officials hope will help state agencies become much more efficient and less wasteful with time and trash. Well, that's it for Phuket Extra today from all of us here at the Phuket News Center. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow is a holiday and we'll be off, but we'll be back on Saturday with Phuket Extra Extra with the top five stories of this week. Until then, stay classy, Phuket. This is the Phuket News. This is Novosti Phuketa, the Russian newspaper for Phuket. This is Puji Dao Ji Wen, the Chinese newspaper for Phuket. And this is Kao Phuket, the new Thai language newspaper for Phuket, available at over 600 locations across the island. Stay up to date with the latest news in any language. Pick up your copy today. Your island, your paper.